There's power in a drum beat on a hill above the sea. Power in the voice of a supporter. But it all amounts to nothing. Together we don't sing. There's power in one one. Lord, boy, and sea. Yes, he lord or forever. Someday, North County. Yes, into our lands. Get back on you and me. All our voices strong together. As we cheer on our team. There is power in one one. Lord, boy, 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 sea. When it came to this, and a chance where it's a blank slate, we had a blank slate with this club, we had a blank slate with loyal as a term. And a lot of people codify that as being too generic, being a laundry brand, being a corporate brand. When in reality, the blessing that gave us his supporters is we have a chance now to invest and look inward and say, okay, what are, what are the things they overlooked or they missed? With San Diego, the unique thing was always just the way that people congealed around certain things that didn't have to do with where they were from or, or who they were or what their cultural background was, but that we found things that connected us as almost like friends to each other as opposed to, that became family as opposed to just friends. And so where did that start? How did that come about? And why was that always the case? And my parents always explained this to me that San Diego was different than most places. And so I tried to find an origin spot to that. And a lot of it, you know, if you go back to the missions, it's not, as, it's not as fun as we were led to believe in fourth grade. So you keep going forward, and even the boom in the West was very money-driven. But there is the story of this dog that just, you know, happens to fit so perfectly in the ethos of this city. My introduction to Bum the dog, because I didn't grow up in the city of San Diego, I had no idea what Bum was until probably three or four years ago, and, you know, hanging out with Drew enough um, and drinking with Drew enough. Drew had said that, yeah, this, this story of Bum the Dog, this would, if I was ever on uh, Drunk History, this would be my Drunk History story that I would tell. We kept looking internally and I kept you know, whispering it to a couple of people, hey, this is still a good idea, but I never wanted to push it too far. I never wanted to say, this is my idea, or this is my thing. And in fact, there's, there's three of us who really collated around this saying that this is what we think is a rallying cry for what this effort is. Um, the idea came up um, just as a representative of San Diego. Some of us weren't familiar with the story. I wasn't super familiar with Bum's story, but as soon as I heard his history, it, I, it resonated with me. Uh, what I know is as soon as I saw it and had an inkling of the story, I was like, yeah, absolutely. Other people started getting involved and they're like, look what I found about Bum. And so all these stories start, started coming up about Bum the dog, San Diego's dog. Stories about who Bum was and how, what he represents. And I was like, yeah, that's, that dovetails right into what we're thinking about. What has surprised me was the fact that the people, once they started reading, they couldn't stop. They had to keep diving in the way that I did. And that's not usual with most things. I'll read Wikipedia pages till I fall asleep. Most people aren't that way. So I, I've come to understand that. But with Bum the dog, it's just this lightning rod that brings people in and then they can't stop looking up facts or finding out more information, and there's not a ton of it, but they scour the same five or six websites that I have, and then they start going even deeper, and it's, it's a whole other world that most people just aren't, aren't realizing is right under their fingertips. It was right from the very beginning, and I think even the people that had a little bit of confusion about it um, from the beginning maybe heard the story and went, well, there it is. But I will say, um, at first, even with the whole bum idea, I. I think I was pretty hesitant towards it. Um, because, not because I, I always thought the supporter culture here and the supporter culture we would develop would be skulls and crossbones and armies and, um, you know, hammers and daggers and, you know, crossbows and all that stuff, but it's different and it's unique. But then it, then it kind of hit me like, it doesn't have to be unique, it doesn't have to belong in soccer culture, it can just be uniquely San Diegan and we can make it what we want to make it. Um, and then I really, I loved it. Somewhere along the lines of, somewhere in this time frame of doing all of this, uh, I believe Steve gets a message from one of the guys at Brandy O's, who says, hey, we're local, we're from San Diego, we would love to work with you guys. We actually are a professional branding company. We're, uh, we've done, you know, we're officially licensed with the USL. We're their official like branding partner. Are they joking? How much are they gonna charge us? Like, we don't have money. But we love soccer and we wanna help. We wanna contribute. Um, and so we're willing to, you know, just donate our time to help you guys out. We're fans of San Diego. 
and we're fans of creating fanatics and fanaticism and pageantry and hype and excitement and you know that is what the locals are all about. Turns out that they were actually going to be members too. They wanted to be a part of this, and they're like, no, 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 we want to, we want to help on this. Like we want to contribute our talents, and we're also going to be members of this. Like we want to be a part of this community just in general. We love this idea. It's our town versus your town, and what it means to be from San Diego, from to you know what it means to be from LA, or Orange County, or Phoenix. Um, and being able to celebrate that in unique ways. We were all kind of blown away by that. It was like, really? Like, is this really happening? Um, and Daryl responded like, holy crap, I can't, like, this is unbelievable. Because I, I included a little bit of a spiel in, like, who they are. Um, and I, I just, I responded back like, oh my god, yes, we would love to be, like, we would love any help that you guys would give us. We have a history of designing for 20 years outside of San Diego. Right. And we got really good at sort of identifying the stories and how to pretty quickly in other communities across America trying to figure out, you know, what are these what are these stories? And in the back of our mind, we've always thought like, well, if we had to like use the sort of investigative work or think about our own hometown that way, you know, what stories would we be interested in and what stories are worth telling and what are stories are iconic and here was like that first time where we're sitting down going like, wow, we got to figure out what are those stories. And so I think still kind of hesitant, like, yeah, okay, right. They're going to help us out. Let's, let's see what happens. Yeah, and I re we sat in this very couch uh, for the session, brain initial brainstorming session. And I think we all talked about our fears and concerns. I mean, it's like naming your own kid. You know, it's really intimidating. And you know this town so well, and you know its idiosyncrasies and... I found it to be very challenging. We met up with them. We talked to them about about what our vision was, what we're all about, and um, the conversation was. They weren't asking us like, "What do you want out of the crest?" They wanted to. They wanted to know why the locals, just like you asked. You know, they wanted to ask, "What's what does the name represent? Um, what does it mean to you personally? What does it mean to the group?" Luckily, the founding members of the locals group came in hot with like a lot of ideas. <laughs> right, right. And ideas that we, uh, we had a few maybe vague ideas, but you know, we're kind of newbies to soccer, so we, we wanted to tread lightly and be respectful to the culture, and we're sort of excited new fans to the, to the culture of it all. And then actually at Brandios, I started talking about, you know, oh, well, there's this story about Bum and all this stuff, and I kind of looked at Drew and I was like, why am I telling this story? Like, you should tell this story. When they started sharing their big sort of overarching, what are we gonna hang our hat on? Um, sort of ideas about what the locals could mean. That's, it was pretty exciting. And uh, in the bum story, it was one of the favorites that emerged. It was pretty special and unusual and metaphorically it was a really nice fit and it was really cool. There's like sort of two sides that are, that are, are, are traps. One is going completely cliche. Like, oh yeah, like All right. put a surfer in there. Right, like the, the obvious stuff, but you absolutely want to stay away from that because that's where, you know, the easy, that's the easy path. Then there is the path that is so, you know, esoteric that people are like, I don't know if I've heard that story or like, we don't even know what that is. And you've got to find that middle ground, which is unique, but accessible. Well, the development of the crest of any logo that we do starts with sketches and we still hand sketch everything. And uh, the, the bum story, the local's name was the name. Everyone agreed that that was the name. But the bum story, while I think was maybe the front runner, we still were like, okay, well, let's keep our options open. And sometimes you don't know something is really going to sing until you see it um, you know, right there in front of you. They sent us a lot of like, things to go over. It was like three or four pages, and it was you know, 1A, 2A, 3A, you know, with the colors, and, um, and, and we went through a voting process, and we gave them feedback, and then they worked on stuff, and we ultimately, you know, settled on, uh, on, a, on an idea and a design. So when I sat down to sketch, I, um, I, I think I was tasked with um, fleshing out a few ideas, like um, the lighthouse, or I'm sorry, the um, yeah, the lighthouse maybe the mm -hmm. uh, lifeguard tower. The there was a few. There was some. There was some other hidden agenda, secret ideas I had that were um, really out there. 
Like, you know, you never know someone's temperature for um, how much they want to stir the pot. Just kind of threw around ideas, went back and forth through emails, meetings, discussed our, our ideas. They had some ideas, had some crazy ideas. But yeah, as soon as after that first round, when collectively we all jumped on the phone, you know, uh, you never know if you've, if a concept you've come up with resonates with people, but they all, there was a sort of unanimous chorus of that, that's our, that's our dude. Um, so when Brandios kind of put together this sketch, we saw it mixed in with all of their other amazing ideas, and that one just stood out. That one was, we saw that and we were like, that's it, bums our guy. This is gonna be something that's gonna blow people away. Like we all knew, once we saw the final product of what not only our letters, but the crest itself was, and how bum was, I think we knew, I think we knew when we hit it, for sure. And not only, I mean, yeah, bum story and bum uniquely is amazing, but, if, but even people who don't know bum and people who don't understand or would want to read into the story, because I think so much of marketing and branding is what do you see at the surface level, right? People see a dog, but I love dogs. San Diego is such a dog-friendly town, and who's more loyal than dogs? So it, it, it fit from a, a very surface level, you know, perspective. It fit from one layer deep from like, you know, the dogs being loyal and, and dogs being San Diego. Um, but it also fit from a deep, deep perspective with Bum and his story and being, you know, the, the town's dog and being loved by all and being owned by no one, just like a supporters group should be owned by no one. It was, real it was one of those tripods that you could wrap But around. the reality is this place has a lot of rich history and a lot of people forging past that are unique. And in that sense, we had an animal who saw himself as a person who thought he was, you know, not just any animal, and not just any person, but the highest class of society that he rode in a car alongside a president, right? He rode in a, a carriage. It was him and the president. Those are the two carriages in, in the parade that he was in once. And just the audacity of this dog to say, I'm this conduit for so many different things, that you, you have to see that almost that presence was really what unified and codified this place as a special, different, you know, American city. But all of it comes back to not a melting pot and almost not a mosaic, too, but something that says we have core ideals of why we stay. And Bum, you know, as a dog, didn't have a lot of choice to stay, but he was a free dog. He could do what he want. And he just chose to stay around the people and the places that really codified what early San Diego was about and what defined the spirit of independence and the spirit of idealism that still exists to this day. We're all San Diego. And it's not my story, it's our story. And seeing people like Travis Peterson just be ignited on fire in the last year from learning the story and then just running with it completely was things that, to me, codify, doesn't codify. It solidifies, it cements this idea as something that is not just for a specific period in Horton Town in the 1800s, but is really something that's an idea of how to live your life as a San Diego moving forward. And just has so many just other messages throughout that it was unavoidable coincidence. It was a really cool uh, process to be involved with to, from the just ideas that were thrown out there. Like I said, my lifeguard idea and the beer idea, um, Drew's bum idea, the sunset behind it with the, with the fading stripes, like it all um, just from such like conceptual ideas to actual branding and only in a matter of a couple months, especially when they volunteered their time was just, it was a really fun process and something that um, grew us even further because the crest was so widespreadly loved. And we want to make sure that the brand is always putting out something exciting and fresh and that the supporters group is the m most decked out, well decked out supporter group in the, in the, in the, in the world. Um, and you know, uh, and we are grateful to contribute to that. And San Diego is such a, there's so many unusual, cool, un untapped too, I feel like. Yeah. There's not like tons of people out there like haunting for, you know, for ways to like project the unusual parts of San Diego culture out there. So it's, there's a really cool opportunity. We're really excited for the future of where we can take, take this. And I, again, I couldn't thank the guys at Brandios more. Um, what amazing people to work with. Um, it's just, they're just guys like us, you know, they're just members and want to contribute and they did a phenomenal job. And I look forward to working with them more and more. We actually have a list of, uh, in our leadership Slack channel, we have a little thread that says, uh, 
Uh, what else do we want Brandy Yost to draw up? Uh, we, we figured out our identity, we figured out who we are, and now it's a matter of actually putting out that story. Bum is awesome. I'm so excited to see everybody in, in their bum gear. It's, it's really cool. It's exciting, it's fun, it's been a long process, but our bylaws have been all in place. We have our leadership in place complete now. Um, our last member finally just joined in leadership. We are now just moving forward to finally get some merch in people's hands to start spreading the love all over San Diego. The cool thing about all of this is that uh, just a couple months ago, we were just you know a handful of people meeting up at some breweries after work just to chat about what goals we kind of had in mind, what we wanted to accomplish and achieve, um, how we could really show our support and put together this supporters group. And to see how far it's come in the last few months um, and how supportive the team has been also of just you know, lifting us up and, and um, helping us to really be a successful supporters group. It's been amazing. The, the give and take that's going on there. We've gone to meetings where they've told us you know, their vision of who they are and we've shared our vision of who we are, had some beers and some chats. Um, the, the number of people that are, are proficient in their area of expertise who have stepped up to volunteer. You know, we're talking about people that are, you know, we're doing marketing with professional marketers. We're doing art with professional artists. We're doing, uh, you know, the banking and accounting are people that do that in their lives and are giving up their time for that. We've got you running around recording all of this, the organic growth of this as it has kind of snowballed and developed as we're getting closer in the stress of we're, you know, we're 60 days from game time, we're 30 days from game time. As that's growing, it's like people are kind of working their way into doing this and doing it well. And so, if anything, there's a sense of this, this, we're in this together, and then the mind is blown by the efforts being put forth by people who are stepping up and doing a really good job. People, you know, like Travis and Eileen and, and you know, Jerry and Steve, and, and we think, where did that all start? You know, that starts with Daryl and Drew and Steve a year ago, roughly, starting to have conversations and saying, yeah, we, we, we have faith that our community can do this, and the community is kind of stepping up and doing that. So that's, I think, above and beyond everything else, I think that's the most impressive part of what's happening here. So those should come in at the end of the month. We still have a long ways to go, but we've really ticked off a lot of boxes, and I'm really proud of, of how far how far we've come and what each individual person has sort of brought to the group. I'm really impressed with my fellow Locals leadership members and um, I'm just trying to do my part and, and help everyone as well. I'm excited to show the world that San Diego's here. San Diego's here for, for soccer, and the community's here. I think that there's going to be a lot of support and I think it's going to be pleasant and we're ready. I think we're ready. Yeah, it's a community. From when I, when I joined this effort to now, the biggest thing for me is really the fact that people have kind of just come out of the woodwork. We have a few of them here today who showed up at noon for our crazy early meeting that we all honestly put early so that we wouldn't have too many crazies <laughs> hanging out. And luckily they're not crazy, they're amazing people, but just the people who come out and say, I love this, I love what we're doing as a group, and they feel a part of it. We, it's, it's a lot about us and we, and what we're doing together. I'm excited. I'm excited to see where we're going with this. Uh, I think that uh, a year from now, we're all going to get together and just say, wow, we made it happen.